Welcome to Speakers TV and wherever you are in the world, there is a reason why you've joined here on this amazing Wednesday. Guys, in this episode, we're going to bring to you some of the best speakers, some of the best influencers, and not only that, we're also showcasing a number of our students who have gone on to either write best-selling books, to be on TEDx stages, or ultimately get them to share their journey on how they made it for an ordinary life through to knowing exactly what their story is and then ultimately learning how to get that story out there. We truly believe in you and I'm really glad you're tuning in to our Wednesday episode of Speakers TV. We'll see you on the other side. Michelle Lim, now get this ready. One thing I just love is, uh, is connecting with other entrepreneurs all around the world. And, uh, and we launched, and the most amazing thing, and this is what vision looks like, right? Uh, just two years ago, I was personally doing every single boot camp. I was personally doing every single one-day event at Speakers Institute, uh, and, so on and, and so on and so forth. However, two years ago, we made a decision to ensure that we can grow this. And so we then launched in India, we then launched in Singapore. We then launched our newest, um, you know, chief facilitators out there in the marketplace, Warren Tate, Kath Malloy, Dimian, so on and so forth. And it's fo absolutely phenomenal what we've seen in the last two years. And so we launched there in Singapore uh, just, uh, you know, less than two years ago, right? And one thing I just love is that when you, when you find really unique, amazing people, you want to make sure that you can lean into them, uh, encourage them, uh, and, and ultimately find ways how we can serve them in the best possible way. And Michelle Lim was one of those people. Michelle was one of the very first people that did our boot camp there in uh, Singapore. And Mich the, b the most amazing thing about sh Michelle, she actually runs her own uh, uh, large um, business, there in Singapore. It's a training organization and she trains uh, a lot of people in various uh, aspects and this everything from young people all the way through to uh, you know older people wanting to be accredited or um, in whatever it might be. And then on top of that she also just recently finished her talk at uh, 10, uh, sorry on the TEDx stage there in Singapore as well. How cool is that? Give her a hand! And so I've actually asked Michelle this morning uh, to do a session with us to really help us all on this journey towards being the greatest influencer that we can be. So, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Michelle Lim! For everyone! Well, I love the energy. And I would like to do this opening with all of us involved. When I'm saying, when I'm clicking on this screen to say, hello, speaker, I would like you to look into each other eye to eye, and say, hello, speaker. All right, shall we do that? And for instance, the next one. All right, all right. Let me see. Technical fault does happen occasionally, but don't worry. So, okay, don't worry. Just, just make sure they look into each other's eyes now. <laughs> all right, find the one that you really will Look at him. Okay, and say hi. Hi. It's so good to see you here. Yes. And in case you don't know the person next to you, just introduce a little bit more about yourself, right? Why are you here? Simple question. Why are you here? Yeah, one more is changing. Yeah. Yeah. I see you. So now I, I flew in yesterday um, together with my best friends, Irene, and uh, we, we took the red eye flight. Usually we call red eye flights. Red eye flights meaning that, you know, it's a midnight flight and um, we try to catch some sleep because I know that I'm going to speak on the very first day. And it's really, really grace and mercy that's given by Sam and the organizer to be able to speak on the first session. It's a great honor, responsibility, yeah. 
but it's a great joy because so that I can sit back and relax for the next two days. <laughs> 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 so this is really, really enjoyable for me and I'm really, really very happy to be here with all of you. A little bit of history about myself. Um, about approximately 20 years ago, I couldn't be possibly standing on the stage to speak to you in English. I'm a Malaysian, Chinese educated. Um, I came to Singapore in 1992, so you can guess my age. I finished my high school in Malaysia. I went to Singapore to finish my degree. And at the time, it was quite challenging for me because being a Chinese educated person hardly speak English in a Chinese school. Came, went to Singapore to really learn everything in English is totally daunting to me. And during that time, I had this desire to make an impact because being a Chinese person, educated from a very traditional family, you know, we care about our face, you know. We cannot bring any disgrace to the family and it's an honor that we have to make sure that we always do at the very best that we can so that we don't disappoint anybody. So with that kind of attitude, I went to Singapore and, and joined the college and first day, the teacher said, hey, we have a Malaysian in the class. What's your name? And I said, oh, my name is Michelle. And then she said, can you share with us more about yourself and about your country, especially about the politics, blah, 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 blah. And I was totally dumbfounded because I really do not know how to express myself in English. And all I said was only two words. No comments. <laughs> <laughs> I had that no comments for six months. <laughs> and one day, the principal called me into the room and said that, I heard about you and I heard about your no comments. <laughs> and I believe, if let's say you carry on to, be, to have no comments, I will send you back to your country and I believe you have no comments as well. <laughs> and therefore, there and then, I made a decision that I have to change my perspective. I have to work double hard in order to improve my English. And during that time, financially, we couldn't be afford to go to any language school. So what I did is very simple. To you, it's a day of newspaper. And newspaper is the only English material that I use to improve my English. It's a one-day news to many people, but it is a one-month news to me. Because it took me one month to completely understand the entire articles in the newspaper with lots of Chinese vocabularies, dictionaries, explanations. And I'm very thankful that I actually been to this special occasions that is organized by a classmate. And she said something, you know, Michelle, if I say you would like to learn how to speak better, you have to speak. You can't just possibly understanding and, and absorb all the knowledge in you and do not speak. How can you improve that? And since then, I became very talkative. <laughs> um, well, Sam and some of my classmates know very well. Speaking is still something that, in the back of my mind, that am I, am I really worthy? Am I really able to share something valuable for people? But I'm really thankful to Speaker Institute. It really changed my mind. And it changed, I believe, all of us as well. Okay, let me test it out with the technically. Is it okay? Cool. Now, I would like all of us to look into each other's eyes and follow me to say that. Hello, Speaker. Hello, Speaker. Hello, Speaker. Movement maker. Hello, impact builders. Hello, impact builder. Hello, change maker. Hello, change maker. And important things. Hello, leaders. Hello, leader. Great, give a round of applause. Hey. Yes. <laughs> My name is Michelle. I'm a 17 years old mad woman on stage. My t shirt speak of it. Um, I started mad school is approximately 17 years ago. And it is a school that is really deeply, deeply impacted me with all that I've learned, I put in the place as a platform to empower people. 
I firmly believe that every one of us is creative. There are many of us have doubts that thinking that, ah, creativity is not something for me. No, I, I'm not that gifted. I, I'm not good. But in my last 17 years of running Mad School, which is stand for making a difference through marketing, advertising, design, I've witnessed swimming instructor became the art director. I've witnessed a curtain seller running his own advertising agencies. I've witnessed a taxi driver, now is a creative director of Ogilvy. I've witnessed many, many outstanding ordinary people. They chose to become super ordinary, extraordinary, not because of what they already have. It's because a decision that they made. And that is, has been my, my mission in my life that is to empower and to transform community through design. And that's what I do every single day. You know, there is a Chinese proverb saying, if you are planning for a year, so rise. If you are planning for a decade, plant tree. But if you are sowing for a lifetime, educate people. And all of us here have a very important role we are speaker, we are trendsetter, we are disruptor. We are the leaders in this space to educate people to be greater. Day in, day out, I organize various events in Singapore, from youth to adults to conference, working with government organizations, talking to youth from different backgrounds, youth at risk, ex-offenders, drugs ex-offenders. And we also run events that is to make sure that the entire ecosystem is being fostered and nurturing so that everyone is on the same page by transforming and empowering various stages, different level of the people, not just for ordinary public people or not just for super leaders, but even for those communities that have forgotten. This is actually a group of refugees that they were stranded in Indonesia. At the time when I was given this particular project to ask that, Michelle, will you be able to come and support this group of communities? I was asking myself, what can I do for them? And then with our whole team, we came together and we said that, hey, we are only very good in education. Why don't we use what we have to empower these people with the skill so that even though they are in Indonesia, they, do, they were not given a citizenship, they were not given any permit to work. They are basically from Afghanistan and they're stranded in Indonesia to seek asylum from persecution. They run for their life not because they are hoping for a better life. Simply, they are hoping for one simple thing, to have peace and to be alive. And wow, that blew my mind. You know, many of us in our stages of life, we could be inspired by great leaders, but these are the people that inspired me. All they look for is only such a simple mission in their life, to make sure that their family are safe. And they went through all the difficulties just to be sure that their family is in safe conditions. And I met Nick about six, seven years ago. And I told Nick, I must have a picture with you. It was a very, very uh, unique occasion because it, it is a closed door meeting and I managed to get all my teams. We closed the office, all of us just go there to meet him. And we took this picture. And I told Nick that, Nick, I know that there are many people uh, having this unbelief because of the physical disabilities, and I really would like to do something for them. And he said, yes. The saddest part in our life is that when the able man, physically able man, fail to see their invisible disabilities, and we, although we are physically disabled, but we have hope and dreams 
that we can see the invisible abilities in us. And this is what we did for in Singapore, educating people with disabilities. And I call them people with dreams. These are really awesome people. They suffered muscular dystrophy. And as you know, muscular dystrophy, typically they only have approximately 10 years. Most of them couldn't live longer than 30 years, 35 years. As young as little boy, which is only like 17 years old. And this is Shufin. He's about 19 years old. And he told me in my eyes that Michelle, although most of us couldn't live beyond 30, maybe there is a countdown that made me realize that I should treasure my single day and to do something different. And that is so powerful. I mean, these are the lives of the people that we may see them every day struggling, take up their daily challenge and go beyond it. And how about us here? There's more we can do. Definitely, there's more we can do. This is a very interesting phrase that most of us will know. The life of significance is to give somebody who needs your gift, your leaderships, and your purpose. And all of us are desired to live a fulfilling life. You may look at me and thinking about, wow, Michelle, that's great. You and your team has done a great job. You know, every day you are impacting lives from all walks of circles, socials, different reach, reach out to different groups of people. But as we are celebrating and we were thinking that we are having a good impact life, a fulfilling life, we thought that, yes, I've made it. That should be the way. We carry on to make a difference. We carry on to make an impact to the people. That is our mission. Day in, day out, we live with that. We breathe in with that. We breathe out with that mission. But not all the endings are always happy. Just as I was looking into the company's impact that preparing for 2019, and we were invited, nominated um, for Brands for Good in Singapore uh, to receive the award. I was compiling and celebrating with my staff and talking about, wow, you know, we have, we have went on to Cambodia, we have went on to, to Indonesia, we, we, in Singapore, we have touched all walks of life, we have achieved so much. That is really a great job. And I had a phone call rang. It was one of my advisor. He's only two years older than me. His name is Gary. Gary has seen me grown and he has coached me all the while for approximately close to 19 years. I've knew him for 19 years. And it was a call from his mobile phone, but it was his wife on the other side of the phone. And his wife was crying and said that, are you the Michelle that, that running that school? I said, yes, I am. And he said that, I, I would like to, to break a news to you. Gary had gone. And I was shocked. His wife was crying and weeping over the phone. And I was thinking, how could that be possible? He is only two years older than me. And his wife said, yes. He left without a word. He left without any single thing that is telling us. We know that you are his great friend, and therefore we called you. So, on that day, that night, I was locking myself in the room, and I was thinking. Many of us have been very busy in making an impact, doing a lot of difference, just like me. We every day excited by all the movement. But I realized that I missed out something very important. And that is, movement does not mean progress. Yeah. 
We could be busy planning for activities to fill our life, to think about what can we do, pack our schedule day in, day out, meet the people that we think that it will be the great person that can lead us to the next level. But I would like to remind all of us here that movement could keep you busy talking around, but it may not mean a real progress that you are seeking for. And second realization, who's next? Gary left without a word, and it made me ponder, what if I live today? Who's next? Who is going to be the next person that's going to carry on your vision, carry on the legacy that you have, that you started? And the third realization that I had is legacy starts now. As we are talking about our vision, we need to also look into the legacy that we are planning. And it starts now. Therefore, I realized that what I've been missing in all these years, that yes, we're making impact, we're making a difference, but I miss out something very important. I allow KPIs, I allow all the impacts, the lives as the numbers on my balance sheets or on my impact reports. I need to have a vision, and the vision required me to start building the legacy. And Nelson Mandela mentions very clear, there are people who have visions, but no actions. These are the daydreamers. There are people that have the action without vision. They just keep themselves busy. Let's be the one that have the vision with action, because only that, that will become a guiding star for all of us here. What are we doing for? Why are we doing it for? Therefore, I change my perspective. I no longer occupied myself with all the activities. I started to learn how to build people. And building people is very, very important for all of us here. Because it's not just about going there to do a very wonderful opening and a wonderful stage and a wonderful audience. Everybody are into it. And after that, it's no more. We have to start to build people that is go alongside with us. And that's why I was so excited when Sam is announcing all these Speakers Tribes initiative. These are the initiatives that building people. And every one of us, we don't have to own the companies, to own the tribes to do that. We can start doing it. I always believe that charities start from home. Your immediate families, your immediate friends, your immediate colleagues, everyone can be your tribes. Everyone can be the possible people that you can spend your time to build. And that's what I do every day now. I dedicate my time intentionally intentionally to build people. And I'm going to show it to you that how I came to realize these things after Gary's death. And I would like to show you a simple step that allowed you to navigate at this junction where you are and how can this lead you. And this is what I call the ECG of life. We all know what is ECG. It's about electrocardio, measuring about your heart rhythms to ensure that your heart rhythm is normal. But I would like us to take a very different step. Assuming that today I'm going to ask you, what is the ECG of your life? The heartbeats that you have every single day that you wake up, would you be able to draw that out? How will that chart be look like? Paint it in your head first. And basically, I draw my own ECG life in the three simple components. The dots, the circle, and the line. 
and I'm going to show it to you how did I draw the ECG of my life that made me realize that amidst of all the busyness, I need to pause and to know that what truly matters while we are still here. Okay. All of us know that we, our life, is made of various moments. And these moments are represented by the dots. Every single occasion, every single moment, randomly happen, expected, unexpected, all are represented in the dot. And the people in your life, they are the circle. Because of them, you are made whole. Probably because of them, your events and your moments became complete. And as you can see, when there are many dots and circle comes together, it forms a line. Some of us have a very interesting life. I hope at the corner you can see this. We have occasions since we are born, different dots. And we have family members surrounding us. And as gradually you move, you'll find that you're forming a life curve. And on this, Y axis and X axis, for the X is representing your lifespan. Well, we do not know, right, how long we're going to live on Earth. And the top, Y axis, is talking about your life events. So you have this X axis about your lifespan, and the Y axis is about the events happening in your life, the moments. Some of us, we started very well. We have a very good straight line. Progressively moving up, graduated from college, doing very well. And we met somebody, and the life became messed up. <laughs> we have that, right? And it's just a circle. We just keep going around the circle and the circle. Every day we are nagging, my spouse, my partners, blah, blah, blah. And then we just keep going on the circle and the circle, and we couldn't break out of it. Some of us, we have a very, very tough life. We didn't choose to be in that family. Neither we wish to be in the family. And the life just go down. But at the bottom pit, you decided to make a decision to change your perception, to change your life, and you know that you are the owner of this life. You rise up. You chose to rise up. You chose to be a different you, and you chose to break through the norms. So that's where you're rising up, and you rise up and you rise up. Because every bottom pit, you know that is the opportunity and a chance for you to retake in order to go for the next height. Therefore, don't underestimate those dark valley that you are in. Because that is the best opportunities for you because nothing can be worse off. You add that worst situations already, so how could that be worse off? There is only one direction for you to go, is to go up. However, there are also some of us here. We are the average. You know, we are not the superhero. We are not the superwoman. We are basically just living true to life, like a circle, momentum, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And that is what we chose to live. My life was a very exciting one. It was exciting, not very much about what was given to me, 
That's why I'm very soaked into what Sam mentioned earlier. We need to have the vision bigger than the provision. As I mentioned to you that I graduated from Malaysia as a Chinese graduate, I thought I was doing very well. I was a national badminton player, I was the school head prefect, and I was really top in the co-ox, and I think, Singapore is so small, all right, it's no big deal for me, you know? So I was so full of myself, thinking that everything will be fine. And I went to Singapore, and on the first day, when people were asking me about, tell us about yourself, I realized that I couldn't even speak out. And it went down. I started to question myself, that who am I? Who am I? Am I really that good? Am I overconfident? Am I a fool? And the next moment, when I gradually, by supporting by many people, friends, who told me that you can make it, I pick myself up and go up. Then I graduated from the college, thinking that I want to be a banker, because that was told that it's the easiest way to be rich. You know, <laughs> you know, Chinese speaker families, it's only three careers you can choose, a lawyer, a doctor, or a banker. <laughs> so that was the top three choice. Science, I'm not doing very well, so a doctor, forget it. Lawyer, you know, my English capability, nah, forget it. Banker, there is a hope, because you need to be very good in mathematics, maybe. So I think maybe I can score well in that, and therefore, I chose to be a banker. So in the very first 20 of my life, I only have a single dream. I want to be rich and famous. And I even told my mom, send me to Singapore. I guarantee you, before I turn 30, I'm going to be the millionaire. And guess what? I failed. <laughs> because on the very first day, when I was given the opportunity to become the investment banker, I quit my job. I quit my job within the 24 hours. I thought this was what I looked for. I thought that was my vision. And in the end, when I was put into the position, sitting at the corner, looking at the computer screens, analyzing the stocks and the foreign exchange, the forex trading. I was asking myself, is that all I'm going to do? Buy, sell for the rest of my life and make a fortune? Is that my worth? And I asked the manager there and then, say that, you know, Mr. Lim, may I know that why are you working in this environment? It is so stressful. And every day just looking at the screen and the monitor, and he just replied me. It's about the money, the paycheck, girl. <laughs> and, and I struggle a lot, you know, I struggle a lot. A lot of us, we have invested our time, our life on something that we set it and we fixated our mind in that goal. And suddenly you feel that it's not congruent with what you want to do. It's not aligned with your heart. I would like to ask you, do you still remember your heartbeat? Do you know what is the ECG of your heartbeat there and then? Those moments that you struggle, those inner voice that you have, do you recognize them? I was brave because I'm a bad woman. I was brave, so I took a decision. I decided to quit my job within 24 hours. And there goes, the life was, seems very rosy. I was going to be a banker. It plunged down again. I know that that is not what I want to do, but I don't know what's next for me. By chance, I came to know about education. And I said that no harm to give it a try. I'm jobless, penniless at the time. What's next for me? Can't be worse off. Try something new then. And I did. And through trying, I found my passion. Through the passion, I found my impact. Through the impact, I found my calling. And through that calling, I started to realize the vision that I would like to have. 
And the vision is more than just a direction that's guiding me. It's also about the legacy that we desire to build while we are still in this lifetime. And you know what? I'm not going to be standing down here, keep talking and talking, you know. I'm going to let you experience this moment together. On the table, there is this A3 paper, and there are some marker. I would like all of you to try this ECG of your life. Take out the paper, come, everyone. Just take a piece of paper. I would like all of us to do this very honestly and very transparently to yourself. To yourself. Take this paper and you draw on your Y and the X as is. For your X is about the life span. And of course, we all believe that there's this power in visioning, right? So draw the lifespan as long as possible. That if you like to. For me, I usually will draw 120 years. <laughs> Okay? And then on your Y axis, that is the life event they would like to capture. For some of us, maybe you want to start off your story or the ECG of your graph at the age of five. Maybe some of you at the age of 10. Maybe you are as forgetful as me that you would like to plan your year started off at the age of 20. It doesn't matter. H is just a number. It is just a number. So all I wish you to do is start to chart down the occasion that's really tucked in your heart, the lowest moment of your life. I would like you to start off. It's actually the lowest moment in your life. And then just make a mark that what was that moment. You could indicate your age. You could indicate somebody, like a circle, who was there with you. What was that event? At the lowest point of my life, that was when I thought that I'm nobody. And the second lowest point of my life, it was I thought I'm going to be a banker, but it didn't turn out well. So, write it down, write it down. You can put out a mental note that it was the first 10 years. It could be the first 20 years. Or maybe you can just write it down that specifically at that particular age, that the lowest point of your life. And I would like you to recall how did you rise up from that lowest point of your life. Was it somebody that is next to you, supported you? Draw that circle down, probably put the initial of the person's name. Or was it you yourself rise it up? Because you know that that is enough. There should be more than this life. Then, I would like you to think again. What was the next crisis you made? So your chart will probably dive down a little bit. And then you rise again. This time, who is the person next to you? Who helped you to rise up? Was it your family members? Your friends? Your teacher? Speaker Institute? Your classmates? Or even a stranger? Who was the angels that in your life that helped you to push up again? And now, the very third part, I would like you to draw 
the ECG of your life that you desire to see? Well, we know that if there's only one way, right? It can't be a downward slope. It's definitely outward. And I would like you to draw that upward slope. And I would like you to start writing down in circle those people that you want to bring alongside with you when you rise up. The people that matter most to you, that you know that when you rise up, you will never forget them and you will rise them up as well. You will lift them up as well because you know these are the people that you want to leave your legacy with. You want to build them up. They are your closest kin, maybe. They could be your closest friends. They could be your fighting mates. Or it could be somebody that you have not forgiven and you would like to forgive that person and at the same time to lift him up as well or lift her up as well. All good? All good? Okay. Since we all are speaker, we are the transetter, we are the disruptor, we are the connector, we are the influencer. Let's take our ACF in practice. Shall we share to the person next to you, within two minutes, the lowest point in your life and the highest point in your life? And in between these two, what have changed? Shall we? Let's do it, just for five minutes. All right. It's great. Now, I believe if they say we talk about the ECG of our life for our future, especially if we talk about Vision 2020, I think most of us will draw the chart like this because we all know there is only one way for all of us here. That is to go up. Because there is more. And the favorite quote, the best has yet to come. Right? So we only have one direction to go up. And I would like you to internalize this chart that you have. Because when you are down, you remember you have made a commitment that you want to go back to the point because you know your life is only have one direction, that is to go up. And those people that you circle, we know that proximity is power. And are not just mingle with people who are powerful, but remember, we also have a calling that is to build people. Usually, at our most vulnerable situation, people follow us. People do not follow you when you are at the highest peak because they will see that, yeah, you have all, you know, you're gifted, you're born from a rich family, da, you have education, da, you have tra 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 tra. But when we're at our most vulnerable point, people watch us. They look at us and they wanted to see whether we are the leaders that they can trust because they know when they're at their most vulnerable stage, they can lean on to us. We've been there, we've done that, and we can do it, and we can help other people. This is my ECG chart. I circle with family members, friends, my colleagues that work alongside with me. I have their name in my mind every day when I wake up. Because all of us, we can't assume we will have this moment until then and then. We never know when our life will be interrupted. We never know. But all we know 
is that when we have a vision that is lived longer than us, we are not afraid. Because every single day, when you're living your vision with the people that you're building up, with or without you, it doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter anymore. It's your vision that lives beyond you. My wife. I had this picture that I was taken yesterday when I was walking around at the resort. And it's very interesting. It's a very nice photo. I mean, I personally feel that it's a nice photo. The sky was very gloomy. There is a launch pad. And there's no vessel. There's no boat. And I was asking myself, how would I be able to get to this destination? The sky is gloomy. This is a launch pad, the jetty, and there's no vessel. This picture reminds us that, friends, we are the vessel. Carry along with us is not just our vision, but it's our people, your people. And although the future may be very gloomy, nobody knows. But I would like to assure you, your vision will be your guide. Your passion is your fuel. Your belief is the energy. And your people is the very reason why all of us are here. And therefore, let your vision live beyond you. Let your vision live beyond you. Your legacy start now. As you are charting your vision, do not allow time constraint to stop you. Do not think that you only have another 30 years, 20 years. You could be only having one day. So what? So what? And I would like to encourage all of us here for the next three days. <laughs> as every single moment that we are going through, the vision and learning from the fellow speakers as well as everybody here, all of us here have a story. We have a lowest point, we have a highest point. All of us here are learning from one another for one reason. We are here for the people, we are here for our vision, and our vision lives longer than us. Thank you. Sam Cawthorn here, CEO and founder of Speakers Institute. If you give me 60 seconds of your time, I'll show you how to set up an online webinar in 48 hours while growing your authentic followers to tens of thousands and then teach you how to package your IP so they buy your programs online using what we call influence on video. What this means is you talk to camera, share your value, and then stack your offerings and create urgency in a way that makes it so irresistible that they click the button and purchase your high ticket sale. Talk with any of our clients globally and I promise you will not find anyone that does what we do. All you have to do is to create an online event, share your ideas, and then stack your offerings just like this. And here's the big secret. Everyone is online right now searching for people just like you to help them learn things that you already know. There are people doing it right now, but they probably don't know as much as you. So right now is your chance to learn how to sell online, and my influence on video formula is easy to use and foolproof for anyone to master. Just recently, I did a one and a half hour video online to only 40 people, and at the end, 10 of them bought my $4,000 product all by one click of the button. It was seamless. So if you want me to show you how to influence on video, stack your offerings that make it irresistible, learn my exact script so you can come across authentic and real, and create urgency, so then they buy immediately, then click on the link below and join my free masterclass. I mean, uh, how, how good the feeling was after completing the session and, and, and I think the feedbacks uh, uh, were, were, just, were just too good. So I mean, that is, 
that is forcing me to think beyond uh, I, i think it was pretty linear thinking earlier and now it is pretty diversified so that is that is very helpful thank you charlene christian and sam for obviously um the benefit and the inspiration you've given to so many of us and to all the participants because i think for me personally this is the first time i've felt that i've been in such a safe space to be vulnerable and to make mistakes um and i know that a lot of us have shared some really traumatic um events in our life possibly for the first time publicly so that's just been a really huge thing so thank you for everyone for opening up and for people to open up and be authentic i'd like to firstly acknowledge you sam thank you so much for um instituting the speakers institute and all of the lovely people who've attended today i think they've done an absolutely wonderful job i think all of their stories are worthy of stage presence um i think you all go very far i just wanted to say being out of the workforce for 6 years looking after little kids and this is the first course i've ever done and it was astounding it blew my mind it was beyond my expectations and thank you Kate for the feedback today that was brilliant and it's given me the confidence to back myself because I didn't have that before cuz you know when you leave for a while and you come back it's all a bit dodgy so thank you and it was really an um, experience which i was looking for to give that push uh, the last push which is needed because i am i'm i'm very low on on execution so your your story and your message gave me that push which i which i really needed so thank you very much and also to the fellow fellow participant for bearing with me oh, thank you everyone you've all inspired me today and i want to thank you sam for putting this on and christian and Charlene for Charlene inspired me to come through conversations we had and so I'd like to thank her in particular and got a lot out of it so thank you everyone and thanks for all the lovely comments First of all I would like to say thank you massive thank you to every single one of you it, it was a great company proximity is power um I'm overwhelmed with the um with all the love and energy and everything else I've learned so much and by this sheer circumstances by now that I'm sitting at home and I actually can do it I'm blown away that I'm actually doing it it's amazing and I really want to thank you Sam for this amazing course yeah I just wanted to thank every single one of you um especially you Sam and um all of the mentors as well there can be at times where we're alone we think we're the only ones we feel like we're the only ones going through that and to share would be to burden each other but in a space like this it actually brings us closer together so thank you very much for sharing um all your stories and thank you for the opportunity i'd actually just like to thank Sam and the team so much for everything you've done but i'd really like to thank everybody else i have learned so much from all of you it's just been so exhilarating i'm so excited for each and every one of you because it's just the growth in such a short space of time has been phenomenal so thank you all very very much Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That has been absolutely awesome. I've learned a hell of a lot today and I really feel like we're all improving. So thank you so much. It's been oh, really awesome. I wish everyone all the best on this on the course. I think it's a wonderful course and Sam you've created a, a an amazing business. But I also want to congratulate the people you've got working underneath you because it wouldn't be that great if you didn't have all this wonderful resource. And, and I congratulate them for supporting you. It's excellent. Thank you very much. All the feedbacks were, were, were golden for me. I learned a lot. Plus, uh, how I should not try to put two, you know, I should not try to put all the information in those six minutes. I should let the audience absorb what I'm trying to convey. They should absorb my story. And, uh, you know, so as the energy level should, should fluctuate properly at the right moment. So thank you very much for that. So I want to say look I've forever been doing courses and programs I've probably spent over $350,000 in my life um this was worth every cent I'm very very impressed with the level of knowledge of the coaches um and they just kept offering gold nugget after gold nugget um definitely was worth every minute as well yeah I really want to thank the coaches and uh and I've noticed a difference in everyone as well over the last couple of days as well so um so thanks guys I just wanted to say uh, my work relies on face to face uh, workshops speaking at conferences around the world so investing in this course is really about looking to the future so it's really an investment in the long term it's been a really really professionally put together course so 
recommendations all around to all of you. To all the staff from Speakers Institute, you guys have been really supportive and really, really lovely and encouraging. But to everybody else, for all of your honesty and your courage for stepping up here and just giving all, because I've learned so much from every single one of you and it's just been really, really good. Thank you. My name is Sarah Cordner and a uh, long time ago, I was one of the protégés. Now back then, I had absolutely no idea where I was going to go. I was an expert in my field, but I was working very much in the corporate space. I also had no followers on any social media accounts. I had no email list. I had no people anywhere on a database that was out there in the public market. But I knew that I needed and wanted to get out, get online and make a difference to the world. And I knew that the only way I'd be able to do that is to go out and start speaking, putting myself out there as an individual. And it was really confronting because there's all these kind of things that we go through. Will people like me? Will people engage with me? Will anyone even care about what I have to say? Will people mock me? Will people criticize me? Will I be torn down by my competitors or trolls? So I had all of these all of these worries, like everyone else does, not knowing where I was going to start. You know, do I start with the logo, the website, the message, the thing, the branding, <laughs> the story? It's all very, very overwhelming. So I want to reassure you guys that I was absolutely there. After going on Sam's program, um, I have gone on to um, win multiple awards. I have now got over 20,000 students in 146 countries. I have been listed by the Huffington Post as one of the top 50 must-follow female entrepreneurs. I've published 12 books, five of which have gone to international number one bestseller. I recently was headhunted by a university and now hold the record for being the youngest university director in Australian history. And I have done all of this from working in the spare bedroom in my house and now have a multi-million dollar education company with children running around. And one of the things that I really want to make clear to other people is that everyone can do this every single person. I had no special starting point. I had no investors. I've never had anyone give me money. I absolutely have just started on the corner of a kitchen table with nothing but a dream, a drive and an ambition. And that is the only thing you need to get started. This is the Celebrity Authority Show. Please welcome your host, Sam Cawthorn. <laughs> And here we are, back again at the Celebrity Authority Show. Super excited about today. We have Dimian Khoury here, who is a researcher into the future of thinking. Demian, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Damn good to be here. Uh, the future of thinking. Uh, tell me more. What does that mean? Okay. For the last two and a half thousand years of Western civilization, basically... We've been left-brained. We've been analytical, left-brained, and that has been one of the main reasons why Western civilization has been so successful. But unfortunately, those days are very much numbered. Because one thing I learned many years ago when I was first studied computer science, this is back in the 80s, <laughs> I learned that anything that the left brain can do, any problem that can be solved by the left brain, yeah computers could do faster. Now, back when I learned it, you know, more than 20 years ago, that was just an interesting idea, but it had no practical application. Mm. The problem is now, with intelligent computers, machine learning, artificial intelligence, that theoretical possibility 25 years ago yeah. is now a reality. And what we're finding is that within the next 20 years, every one of the 80% of the jobs that the modern economy requires mm. that uses our left brain will be gone. Hey, tell us more about left brain, right brain. What, what, what exactly is, is that? We've all heard of it, yeah. but is it, you know, t t um, yeah, tell us exactly what that means. Okay. It was a, a model of the brain that was discovered. Uh, in fact, it was it won a Nobel Prize uh, just over 40 years ago. Mm. It's not exactly how the brain works, but it's a perfect way of describing it. Basically, the, the brain works in two modes, left brain, analytical, it's your linear thinking, it's your logical thinking, it's, yeah. you know, what's this step, then what's the logical next step, okay? And most jobs require that, that's our natural way of thinking. Yeah. But there's another mode, the creative mode, the right brain. And, you know, that's the mode that we're, we're using when we're thinking new ideas, when we're uh, thinking in ways that just don't seem logical, but they're, they're new ideas, there's new discoveries, and that's that basically where 20% of us uh, live. But unfortunately, it is what's going to be required in the next 20 years and our modern education system has just not prepared us for it. 
Hey, Demian, uh, fascinating conversation already. Tell us a little bit more about your journey for you to now become a rural thought leader in this space and a researcher in the space of the future of thinking. Hey, that was actually kind of interesting I because I'm naturally a left brain guy. I was originally an award-winning physicist, right? I was, and then I actually became, I moved into finance. I was chief analyst at Citibank. I was about as left-brained as you can get. Wow. But then there was a turning point in my life in uh, my early, early 20s. Just imagine this. I was, I was at home uh, and I was doing an assignment yeah. for, uh, for uni. And then something happened. There was a, a blackout. Just the whole, like the lights. The lights. Not, the not lights. Break, no, 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 just yeah. the lights, right? The, the lights. And, and I thought, okay, well, what's going on? There was, you know, no lights. And I looked out the window to see, you know, see how much of the rest of the street was blacked out. And no other houses had the lights off. It was just us. Then my dad walked in. Now, you've got to understand my dad. My dad was my hero, right? And, you know, like my dad was a long range navigator in World War II. Like he was such a great guy. You know the average life expectancy for navigators and crews doing those long ranges in the Air Force in World War II is about 18 missions. Mm. My dad do, did 43. He was an amazing guy. And there he was. He walked into my room with the candle, put the candle on the desk, and he explained that his clothing business that he started 15 years earlier had failed. And he was unable to pay the electricity. I mean, this is my dad. This is my dad who survived the most ferocious war in the history of human civilization. And he did not survive the modern economy. And I just thought, how, how could that happen? How could his thinking, I mean, he was a powerful thinker and his thinking had been spectacularly successful mm. up to that point in his life. Yeah. But unfortunately, that thinking was no longer relevant. And, I, and it occurred to me that was a perfect metaphor for what's happening in the, in the whole world now. Okay. We've been so successful up till now, but we now need different thinking. Because the fact is, as I said, everything that the left brain can do, computers can now do. So if we want to keep working into the future, if we want to continue to grow businesses that thrive, we have to use our brains in ways that computers can't. So we're and at a real pivotal moment right now in history. This is it. This is, in fact, this is what I call the crossover. Yeah. And this is, this is one of those things that most futurists I speak to don't understand. Because they, I mean, we've, we've had innovation, yeah. you know, for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. And most, most futurists are saying, well, you know, innovation has always been with us, you know, industrialization, automation. But human ingenuity has always stayed just ahead of innovation. And so, you know, as some jobs get replaced, okay, some people lose their jobs with innovation, major change, but the economy grows and human ingenuity creates new opportunities. And that has always been the case. But over the next 20 years, what I'm seeing is a crossover of the curves where the pace of innovation is going to overtake our ability to adapt if we keep using our brains the same way. Because the fact is, and I keep on repeating it, Whatever the left brain can do, computers can now do. So if we keep on thinking the way we've been thinking up till now, we lose. So, so, so how do we cross over well? And also, by the way, did your dad end up getting the lights back on? So Unbe it was how, do we, how do we cross over well? Well, that's, that's, this, is, this is the beauty of it. Mm. As we rebirth this business, okay, my dad spent the obligatory two years in the wilderness, but then he didn't give up. I mean, that was the spirit of that generation, yeah, right? Yeah. And he, uh, he and I work together. I mean, I used to you know, help him with the business, generating new ideas. And, and basically, a lot of the techniques that we teach in the future of thinking were actually developed in the 80s with the uh, new ideas for my dad's business. And essentially, there's three steps. This is it. The three, yeah. the three steps. First of all, you've got to, what I call, limber up your brain. Just start doing new things, reading newspapers you've never read before, eating things you've never eaten before. Like disrupting talk, patterns. And basically, exactly, up, yeah. that's right. Just, ex just introducing your mind to new sights, new sounds, new smells, new thoughts, new people, new everything. Okay, that's a limbering up process. And, and that's hard for a left brain, isn't absolutely, it? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, but everybody can do it. Yeah, that's good. The next step, once you've limbered up your brain, the next step is to draw a big map, what I call build a big list. And left brain people love doing this, okay. right? Build a big list of everything about your business, your life, 
your, uh, your product or whatever. And that's, that's what my dad and I did. We just built a list of, like, it was a clothing business, yeah. ladies, uh, ladies' sleepwear. Mm. And we built a big list of everything about the product. You know, the, the size, the shape, the colours, the materials, the buttons, even the buttons. You know, the, the size of the buttons, the hole in the buttons, the shape of the buttons, the colour of the buttons, the material of the buttons, like everything. Like, it was 150 things yes. about this one product. And what that does is it maps out a terrain. The third step, and this is the, this is the key, is to start disrupting patterns into the future. And you've got to understand the way the brain works, right? Just imagine the brain as being a flatbed of sand. Imagine a flatbed, like when you're first born, there are no preconceived ideas. You've got instincts, that's about it. You've got no preconceived ideas. There are no patterns already formed in your brains other than those you inherit in your DNA. You open your eyes for the first time and there's a new experience. And so that's like a whole lot of marbles being thrown onto the flatbed of sand and it forms a couple of shallow grooves. Right. And they're the first patterns. And then the next second, another, another handful of marbles and a few more grooves. And what eventually happens is a few grooves form in the sand. Yes. And those repeated patterns and repeated experiences, and they're different for everybody. But as repeated patterns and experiences form, the grooves become deeper and they become our standard way of thinking. They become mm. our comfort zones. Yeah. And the, more, the deeper the experience is, the older we get, the deeper the groove. So every time we have a new experience, right, the marbles typically fall into the grooves and they become our rigid way of thinking. Yeah. And every one of the techniques that we teach in the Future of Thinking workshops is about getting the marbles, get getting the marbles out of the shallows, get, getting the marbles out of the, out of the right. groove. And so, and so what, like a typical example is to create a... It's a great a, analogy. It's, it's a good analogy. It's a really, yeah. really and, and the fact is it works. Yeah. Okay? The, like... Create a problem you never knew you had. That's, that's one. Like, because when you've got a problem, when you've got a problem that you've never seen before, the, the left brain's got no answer to it. And so what happens is the left brain gets out of the way and allows the right brain to take over. So one of the things my dad did, one day he thought two of his sewing machines went down. And we just, okay, we fixed the problem, but then we created this, we imagined this problem. Yeah. What if all of the machines failed? Now, obviously, they never did, okay. but we just imagined it. Okay. Imagine if, and when I use this word to provoke the problem, the yeah. problem thinking. Yeah. Imagine if all the machines went down. What would happen? What would you do? And we just started thinking new ways. Yeah. You know the result of that? Yeah. Within six months, my dad actually got rid of every sewing machine in his factory. So he how got, could he produce? Because he realised that there were large numbers of people yeah. around Sydney who had sewing machines at home, were quite happy to use oh, them. And what he did, really? he became a delivery guy and he would take his cut pieces to all these, what he called outworkers, who would use their own sewing machine and charge him much cheaper than what he could have done it by owning the factory space himself. In fact, what... He Ubered the industry. Back in 1985. <laughs> He did it in 1985 yeah. before anybody had heard of Airbnb or Very anything good. like that. Okay? And it all came from disrupting patterns. So that's the three right. steps. Right. Limber up your own mind. Create a terrain. Create a map of everything you can possibly change. And then find ways of disrupting the patterns. Dimian, absolutely clear. And I visualised all that. And really, really great way to start thinking about the future of thinking. Tell, what, what's next for you? Okay. We are developing a, uh, a large number of techniques, uh, online training, mm. and one of the one of the interesting things we're uh, we're doing with the with the seminars, with my professional speaking, Rex, because you know something I didn't mention, I actually run a video and animation studio. Look, here's me, Mr. Left Brain, right, running a video and animation studio. So, so from analyst at Citibank to now creative. exactly, and that's that's the whole left brain, right brain right. thing. I've shown that I can make that transition from left brain to right brain thinking. And that's what I want to do, guide other people to do the same, to show that everyone, everyone can learn to wake up their right brain. And I mean, and I've, and I've proved it. I mean, I've, and I have watched chief executives, accountants, receptionists, all use their right brains for the first time in their life. In fact, one of, a lot of them tell me, they said their, their right brain, their creative side has been asleep since early childhood. Right? And now they feel that they can take on the next 20 years with confidence. Right. It is absolutely transformative. Right. You know, and, and exactly what you're saying, we are in the crossroads right now. Yeah, this is the crossover. Yeah. Hey, uh, Demian, thank you so much for joining us here in the studio. Absolutely love today's, mm. uh, today's interview. However, just before you go, we have a bit of a challenge. Okay. And this challenge 
is called the 10 second, sorry, 10 questions in 60 second challenge. So Demi and Curry, do you accept the challenge? I'm in. All right, Demi and your time starts now. Favorite color? Red at a wavelength of 732.5 nanometers. <laughs> you can tell you're a left brain. Uh, favorite food? Ah, Lebanese food. Lebanese mm. food. Vegetarian, of course. Yes, yes. Favorite celebrity? Our friend Pat Farmer. Ah, oh, Pat Farmer. He's mm. the he's the runner. Yeah. Ultra marathon runner. Yeah. Brilliant guy. Yeah. We've had him speak. Absolutely. We've actually interviewed him before. Favorite actor? Ah, Sean Connery. Sean. Oh, come on, The Rock. Yeah. Mm. Uh, favorite professional speaker? Kendall Hall, who taught me the real meaning of story. Remember yeah. at the NSA conference? Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Mm. Absolutely brilliant. Favorite book? Uh, even cowgirls get the blues. Read that one. Okay. It's a novel. It's a novel that mixes philosophy with fiction. Even just, cowgirls. Even get cowgirls the get the blues. There you go. Favorite movie? Uh, Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day. They should make a remake of that. You know. Uh, favorite city? New York. New York. Interesting New York. place. Favorite drink? Martini. Shaken, not stirred. Ah, oh, very good. Very good. Pe favorite pizza topping? A vegetarian. Vegetarian pizza. And Demian Curry, if you could be an animal, which animal would you be? Ah, uh, no doubt. The black swan. An animal that for hundreds of years nobody believed could exist until we changed our view of the world, discovered Western Australia, and discovered not all swans are white. There are such things as black swans. It opened up new possibilities to thinking. That is my animal. I absolutely love that. Demi and Curry, thank you so much for joining us here in the Celebrity Authority. Thank you, Sam. I really always wanted to make an impact. When I was a young girl, I had this drive in me to really, really make a change. And I studied environmental science and marine biology. And I worked in the corporate world for about eight years as an environmental professional. But I just realized that wasn't making an impact for me enough. I wanted more. And then while I was going through this whole transition to figure out what I really wanted to do, I came across these people. And I realized for me to really grow into that next step, what I needed, I wanted knowledge from people that knew their stuff. I wanted to have that community that support me and understood me. And really the professionals that have been through it that could guide me on my way. My future is gonna look amazing. I have so much that I want to be sharing, but also the confidence I have now to do that. I'm writing my own book. Next year, I'm launching my new keynote and it's unstoppable. What I can do from there, I'm just so excited and I can't wait to share that with everybody. The big thing is you need people around you that inspire you. If you don't have those people around you, how can you even see that next step? I really think about the future. I take, I plan, I, make, I set those goals for myself. But someone needs to spark that little idea in you to begin with. What is possible? And I've seen that it's possible. I've seen people around me that have done it, that are successful, and I can do it. And I'm absolutely certain of that, that I've got what it takes now that I'm here. Our next TENX speaker is committed to transforming lives through the power of research and innovative medical interventions in order to give hope to those who have lost hope. She's a medical research scientist who conducts clinical trials on children with rare diseases. As a keynote speaker, facilitator and leader, she advocates and creates awareness of clinical trials with a belief that successful medical intervention developed intervention development isn't possible without successful clinical trials. Thus, it's a responsibility that we all share. Here to share her voice for the power of research, please welcome to the stage, Twinkle Bahadjuri. Every situation in life is temporary. They're not lasting. When life treats you good, Enjoy it and live it fully. And when life isn't so good, just remember that this is temporary. 
and the better days are yet to come. So who here knows what clinical trials is? And who has participated in research? Thank you. So if health is our greatest wealth, why is it that many often take it for granted? For centuries, people have been under the impression that if there is no treatment to a disease, there is no hope. As a medical research scientist, I can assure you this is no longer true. Research shows that healthcare is the fourth biggest contributor of our economy, and Australia has a huge potential to establish itself as the international hub for drug developments and clinical trials. So let me tell you about one of my little patients named Emma. This five-year-old little girl suffered from a condition called juvenile idiopathic arthritis, which is caused by inflammation of the joints, resulting in excruciating pain. She could hardly walk from that door to here. It aches my heart to see her that way. Imagine what her family has to go through. And to make matters worse, the doctors have run out of all treatment options for her. Her parents literally pleaded to save their only child. So we enrolled her into one of our clinical trials with a new drug designed specifically to treat that condition. And after eight months of being on the trial, she came in for a review. She came running to me in her pink little high heels and said, look, it's a miracle, I can play again. Honestly, I felt rewarded. Then there was this other little boy, Joshua, with a different condition called Duchenne muscular dystrophy, which some of you may know as DMD. Similar situation, we recruited him to another clinical trial. And after only 10 months, he enrolled himself into gymnastics. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the power of clinical trials. This is how we transform lives. And this is my passion. Now my story isn't about just little kids. My message is about the power of the clinical trials and the impact it has on many alike and really giving hope to those who have lost hope. Clinical trials need you. So how did I get into this industry in the first place? Tracing back in 2009, I came from Singapore to pursue my Master's of Infectious Diseases degree and was taught under one of the finest leaders in medicine, Professor Barry Marshall. He made a groundbreaking research for discovering the causative agent of stomach ulcers called Helicobacter pylori. He did not only discover the bacteria, but also the antibiotics to treat it but during those days, he could not find any human models to test and prove his theory. But because he had so much of convictions in his research, he drank a whole petri dish full of Helicobacter pylori, developed gastric ulcers in himself, and treated himself with the appropriate antibiotics. His theory was proven right, and all medical books had to be rewritten. His discovery and bravery not only led him to a Nobel Prize in medicine, but also benefited millions and saved millions of lives. The day I found out about this was a redefining moment of my life. And I made a commitment to myself that this is how I want to contribute to the world, through research. So what are clinical trials? See. There are more than 4,000 diseases out there with no medical interventions. And this is where clinical trials comes into play, where research investigations are carried out in volunteers who are willing to test new drug developments to find the safest control measures to treat diseases. But who here thinks that being in clinical trial is like being a lab rat? No. 
The medicines we acquire today are a result of past clinical trials that have gathered substantial data for regulatory authorities to approve and commercialize them. So clinical research is the key to finding new solutions in healthcare, and it needs you. With a recent outbreak of coronavirus sweeping across 59 nations, the World Health Organization has declared global health emergencies. With over 84,473 cases as of today, there is no stopping to this disease without a solid research breakthrough. New drugs have also transformed the lives of many. And in managing conditions such as peptic ulcers, epilepsies, rheumatoid arthritis, better and safer contraception these days, as well as nationwide screening programs for different types of cancers. Today, our DNAs are sequenced, our organs are transplanted, our brains are imaged. But these advances have only been possible because of research, the process of discovery, innovation, and development. And in delivering these service in the best way possible, from cradle to grave, Without clinical research, there is no new treatment. Nothing better to offer to patients tomorrow than what we have today. Clinical research today are conducted as scientifically rigorous as possible, but also ethically in the best interests of the participants. Because we know we work with people with rights and dignity. Through research participation, it gives patients earlier access to new drug developments before it is too late. Now, it is easy to think that research is something scientists do, something that happens in the laboratory, in short, something that others do. But the reality is quite different. Clinical research not only involves doctors, scientists, larger network of pharmaceutical corporations, legal and regulatory authorities, but also the most important member of our team, patients and their family members. Imagine what little Emma would have to go through today without clinical research. Imagine what impact would it have on her parents That is why clinical research needs you. This is where you can help. Taking part in research as patients or healthy volunteers as controls can help to improve care, find new treatments in the future, as well as finding out more about yourself and the conditions you may have that you never knew existed. Many lives have been saved today in time because of incidental findings. There is a wealth of information out there from clinical trial registries, portals, websites that can help you in finding a trial that is relevant to you. Remember, clinical trials need you. Healthy volunteers such as yourselves may also choose to participate in its controls, not only as a way of contributing back to the society and the advancement of scientific knowledge, but also as a gesture of kindness and compassion to the mankind. Hence why I have decided to advocate and create awareness of clinical trials, because the research we conduct today could potentially be the treatment of your tomorrow. Thank you. Twinkle!
guys, thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode here at Speakers TV. My name is Sam Cawthorn and we are super excited about Speakers TV and about these episodes that we bring to you every single weekday as well as also on every single Saturday. Guys, we'd love to hear from you. If you've got any feedback at all for us, or maybe you want to comment right down, right now in the chat bar about what was your biggest takeaway from today's uh, session. But also not only that, why don't you join us? So here at Speakers Institute, we do have a number of programs such as our online boot camps or our protege program at Speakers Tribe here. We're all about running these big, large annual conferences every year, but also not only that, there is an annual membership that you can get where in your city, we do have tribe gatherings, all really encouraging you going from where you are today to where you really want to be. Or maybe you want to tell your friends and your family about Speakers TV. But can I please encourage you, why don't you like this page? Why don't you join us each day? Why don't you tell other people about these episodes? Because we are all about really helping you on this journey to becoming that recognized voice of authority for you to find your message and your story and get that out there into the world. We are super excited about your journey, so please lean in and join us today. To your success, my name is Sam Cawthorn, and don't forget, the best is yet to come.